The film begins in 1960 in the Bronx, a neighborhood where many Italian-Americans live and work. This area is controlled by a gangster named Sonny. At that time, a bus driver named Lorenzo lives there with his nine-year-old son, Calogero. One day, Lorenzo drops Calogero off in front of their apartment, where his mom, Rosina, is waiting for him. Instead of going inside, Calogero sneaks into a bar next door, which is owned by a gangster group. The bar is run by a man named Tony, but it's actually owned by Sonny to hide his illegal activities. Sonny has several trusted helpers, including a man named Jimmy. While Calogero is watching the gangsters, his mom suddenly grabs him and scolds him for being in the bar. Later, when Lorenzo comes home from work, he reminds Calogero not to go into the bar again. At that moment Lorenzo doesn't want his son to become a criminal. He wants him to grow up to be an honest person. The next day, Calogero and his two friends, Slick and Mario, saw Sonny collecting money from someone. After that, they saw a bus with black students on it. There, Slick got mad because he thought they were coming into their neighborhood. Calogero told him to ignore them because they were just passing by after school. But Slick and Mario started shouting racist insults and attacking them. At that moment Lorenzo saw this and called Calogero to stop. While Calogero was sitting on the stairs, he saw a man attack another man's car for taking his parking spot. Suddenly, Sonny shot the man who was attacking the car. Sonny then noticed that Calogero saw everything. Quickly, Lorenzo pulled Calogero into their apartment. Soon, two detectives came to their apartment. They said people saw Calogero at the scene and wanted him to identify who had the gun. Outside, the police had lined up Sonny and his men. When it was Calogero's turn to identify the shooter, he told the officers that none of them had fired the shot. Because of this, they were all allowed to leave. Later, Calogero asked his dad if he did the right thing. Lorenzo said he did the right thing for a bad person, which confused Calogero. Then, Lorenzo explained that sometimes in life, you have to do things even if you know they are wrong, and Calogero would understand this when he grows up. The next day, when Lorenzo dropped off Calogero, he saw Sonny nodding to show his gratitude. Shortly after, Jimmy got on the bus and told Lorenzo that Sonny was very thankful they didn't report him to the police. There, Jimmy offered Lorenzo a job as a courier with a high salary, but Lorenzo politely refused because he didn't want to get involved in Sonny's criminal activities. A month later, while Calogero was fixing his bike, one of Sonny's men took him to a bar to meet Sonny. There, Sonny asked Calogero to help serve drinks at the bar since he couldn't hire his father. From that day on, after school, Calogero worked at the bar and earned a lot of tips, without his parents knowing. While the mobsters were gambling, Sonny called Calogero over to roll the dice a few times. At that time, Calogero won 11 rounds in a row, making a lot of money for Sonny. After the game, Sonny gave Calogero tips and nicknamed him C. He even treated C like his own son. As news spread, C noticed that people started treating him differently. Then, a merchant who used to scold him now gave him a bag of peaches and asked him to tell Sonny about the good deed. However, C's parents found out about the money and asked where it came from. C admitted that he worked for Sonny. Hearing this, Lorenzo got angry and wanted to return the money, but Rosina suggested they could use it. Despite this, Lorenzo refused to use the money from Sonny, even though C earned it by working hard. When they got to the bar, Lorenzo put the money on Sonny's table and told him that his son wouldn't be involved with him anymore. Sonny asked C to wait outside while they talked. Sonny told Lorenzo that he respected him, but warned him not to talk like that again. There, Sonny explained that the money he gave C was to help with school fees because he cared about C like his own son and knew Lorenzo didn't earn much as a bus driver. However, Lorenzo noticed that C's attitude had changed and asked Sonny to stay away from his son. This made Sonny angry, and he threw Lorenzo out. On the way home, C was upset because the money was returned and yelled at his dad. Lorenzo slapped him and said the money was bad. C then repeated what Sonny had said about workers being losers. Lorenzo replied that he never pointed a gun at anyone and worked hard every day to earn an honest living. He explained that a tough guy is really an honest guy, and Sonny couldn't do that without doing illegal things. He also said that people don't respect Sonny, they fear him, and that's different. He then apologized for slapping C and said C would understand when he grew up. Eight years later, C is still close to Sonny and spends a lot of time with him. 
Now, C and his friends have a gang called Deuces Wild, where they hang out without doing anything useful. One day, they saw a car with black people driving by, which made his friends angry, but C told them they were just passing through and there was no reason to worry. Soon after, Lorenzo called C to join him on the bus. While on the bus, C noticed a black girl who caught his eye, so he didn't pay much attention to his dad's conversation. Soon after, the girl got off in the black neighborhood, ending his gaze. After getting off the bus, C saw a man named Louis who owed him $20 but never paid. As C tried to catch up to Louis, Sonny called him over. There, Sonny told C that hurting someone over $20 isn't worth it and advised him to forget about it. Sonny explained that he had been in prison for 10 years. During that time, he read a book about leadership, which made him choose that neighborhood to do business. Living in an area with other Italians made him feel connected and able to handle problems quickly. People saw him every day and felt safe, which made them like him. But if someone did something wrong, Sonny would take action, and that's why people feared him. At that moment, Sonny believes it's better to be feared than loved because fear lasts longer. But to make sure people don't hate him, he treats them well within limits. Their conversation is interrupted when a motorcycle gang arrives at Sonny's bar. Inside, Jimmy tries to kick them out because they look messy. However, the gang gets offended, but Sonny lets them stay and drink. Unfortunately, they cause trouble by spilling beer, not knowing the bar is owned by the mafia. Seeing this, Sonny politely asks them to leave, but they refuse and insult him. He then locks the door and tells them they can't leave. The gang realizes they made a mistake, and other mafia members show up, leading to a fight. One night, a young man offers guns to C and his gang. Their deal is interrupted when Sonny arrives. There, Sonny slaps the young man for bringing danger to his area and chases him away, except for C. Shortly after, Sonny tells C that using a gun won't make him a real man. He warns that C's friends will only get him into trouble and advises C not to follow in his footsteps because the thug life isn't for him. The next day at school, C was surprised to see the girl from the bus there too. When his friends wanted to hang out, C said he had to take a makeup exam, but he actually met the girl. Unsure how to start a conversation, he was relieved when the girl introduced herself as Jane and said she liked Italian people. On the way to Jane's house, they agreed to watch a movie together the next day. As they entered the black neighborhood, C had to stop and let Jane go home alone. Unfortunately, some people there were rude to him because he was white. Later, C was hanging out with his friends. They got mad when they saw black people riding bikes in their area. There, he tried to tell his friends that those people weren't causing any trouble and to leave them alone. But Slick didn't listen and started a fight. On the other hand, C, who didn't want to fight, pretended to help his friends while trying to keep one of the black kids safe. There, C protected the boys until they all ran away when someone warned them that the police were coming. When Sonny found out that C and his friends were acting like thugs, he got very angry and warned C to stay away from them. C admitted that he really hated black people but liked the girl with dark skin. He didn't want his friends to know about it. But there, Sonny told him to ignore his friends, saying they would get into trouble and the girl was more important. He advised C to follow his heart and even offered his car to impress Jane, but he suggested C give her a test. For the test, C had to open the car door for Jane, close it after she got in, then walk to the back of the car. If Jane didn't unlock the door for him from the inside, C should break up with her. At that time Sonny believed this test would show if she was someone who cared or just wanted to have fun. Meanwhile at home, C told his father about a friend dating a black girl and asked for his opinion. Lorenzo said he didn't mind different skin colors, but believed people should marry within their own race. This disappointed C because his dad's view was very different from Sonny's. On the day of the date, C took Sonny's car to meet Jane. He locked both doors as Sonny had instructed. When Jane arrived, she looked upset. She told C that her older brother had been beaten up by some Italians. At that time C said he wasn't there, but Jane brought her brother along to see if he recognized C. When her brother got out of the car, he identified C as one of the attackers. This led to an argument, and in his anger, C accidentally said something racist, which he immediately regretted. Upon hearing that, Jane and her brother walked away, feeling upset. Soon after C returned Sonny's car, and Lorenzo watched him from the window. There, Sonny asked why C was back so soon, and C said his first date was a mess. Meanwhile, at home, 
Lorenzo reminded C to stay away from Sonny, saying Sonny didn't trust anyone and would hurt C if he messed up. But C called his father and ancestors losers. Later, at their hangout spot, C's friends said black people had damaged it and wanted revenge. Just then, Sonny arrived, and the kids ran away. There, Sonny angrily asked where C had taken his car because it had a bomb in it when C returned it. Then, C explained everything honestly, saying he could never betray Sonny, who was like a father to him. As C left, Lorenzo saw him and asked what they were doing to his son. Shortly after, Sonny ordered his men to beat Lorenzo and warned him to watch his mouth next time. Meanwhile, C met up with his gang, planning to get revenge. On the way, his friend showed him Molotov cocktails and weapons, making C feel uneasy, but he didn't want to seem like a coward. Luckily, at a red light, Sonny showed up and told C to get out of the car. When Slick tried to stop him, Sonny beat him up and pulled C out. Before leaving, Sonny warned the gang to stay away from C. At the bar, one of Sonny's men told C that a girl had been looking for him. Realizing it was Jane, C went to find her. There, Jane told him that her brother admitted C had tried to help him. C then shared his feelings with Jane. When Jane mentioned her brother again, C remembered his friend's plans and urged her to leave. When Jane unlocked the door for him, C was happy because it matched what Sonny had told him before. Meanwhile, Slick and the gang entered the black neighborhood and started attacking. As they were leaving, someone threw an unexploded Molotov cocktail back at their car, causing it to explode with Slick and his friends inside. Sometime later, C and Jane arrived at a scene with a crowd of people and officers. They saw the bodies of C's friends lying on the ground. C felt unsure whether to be happy because he was alive or sad because his friends had died. He was grateful Sonny had gotten him out of the car. Suddenly, C remembered the bombs Sonny mentioned and worried that his life was in danger, so he rushed back to the bar. When he got there, C found Sonny having a party. As C walked through the crowd, he saw someone with a cold expression approaching Sonny. There, C tried to shout a warning, but it was too late cause the young man shot Sonny. It turned out the young man was the son of the man Sonny had killed in the parking lot eight years ago. At Sonny's funeral, C noticed the gangsters talking casually, not seeming to care about his death. After everyone left, C realized that everything Sonny had told him was true. After a while, a man approached C. This man was the one Sonny had saved in the parking lot eight years ago, and was also a fellow Mafia boss. He told C that he would now take over the area and invited C to come to him if he ever needed anything, just like he did with Sonny. Later, Lorenzo came to the funeral to express his condolences and thank C. At that time, he appreciated Sonny for keeping C away from his friends, which saved his life. From that night on, C finally understood that the choices people make determine their life's path. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is sometimes, it's better to listen to the mafia boss with life advice than your friends with Molotov cocktails. And remember, if your date unlocks the car door for you, she's a keeper.